Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about displacement transmissibility. Now what is displacement transmissibility? It is the ratio of maximum response displacement with the input displacement at the input frequency. That means if there is a system at uh, which is at some base or at some fixed foundation and if the vibration, if the foundation vibrates, so what happens because of the displacement or because of the movement of this uh, base, the mass also moves. The mass also feels a displacement and the ratio of these is de uh, defined as the displacement transmissibility. This is different then the force transmissibility because in force transmissibility what happens the force is applied on the mass and part of it is sent or applied to the ground right or the base so that formed the ratio of the force transmissibility and displacement trans transmissibility is opposite of that when there is displacement at the base and because of this displacement the mass also starts moving or there is some displacement at this uh, mass also that is called as the displacement transmissibility. Now to find the equation of displacement transmissibility we will use the analytical method for force transmissibility we have already done the graphical method. So what we say that if there is a base right if this uh, this is a lump parameter system mass with a spring of spring stiffness x and a damp or a dashpot with damping coefficient c and we say that this fixed support or the foundation is having this displacement y right so because of this what will happen some displacement will also take place in this mass which we are denoting by x so the equation becomes mx double dot is equal to because if you see the free body diagram the displacement on mass is in this direction and same is the direction for velocity and acceleration but if we see for the spring and the damper what is the spring force because it is basically the relative displacement of these two bodies of this uh, support or the fixed ground or and the mass so it becomes s into x minus y similarly for damper the velocity is the relative velocity of both the systems this and this system so it becomes c into x dot minus y dot so if we equate the equations this is these are the equations we get because m x dot is in this direction and these two forces they are in the opposite direction therefore we have used the negative sign right so if we open these brackets we'll get factors like c x dot and c y dot and s x dot and s y s x and s y right so if we take all the factors of x on one side on lhs and keep all the factors of y on rhs right so this is the equation that we get now we say that the uh, vibration or the force that is coming from the ground is a harmonic function right so let's say that y is equal to y that is the amplitude cos omega t so what will be y dot it will be minus y omega sine omega t so we replace y dot and y with these two values so this is the equation one that we get now we have to see that what is the displacement now because of this force we say that whatever is the displacement for this mass is x cos omega t minus phi we said that there is some phase lag of angle phi. So if this is the displacement velocity will be minus x omega sine omega t minus phi and acceleration will be the differentiation of the velocity which is basically rate of change of velocity. So it becomes minus x omega square cos omega t minus phi. Now see if you look at these two values we say that whatever is the uh, frequency of the displacement of the ground same is the frequency of displacement of the mass but the phases may vary right the phase lag may be there so it will look something like this that if let's say this is the uh, curve for y so it is possible that x may have some phase lag it will it might be something like this so this this difference shows the 
phase difference, right? So we place the values of x, x dot and x double dot in this equation 1. So this is how the equation looks like, right? Now what we are going to do, we are going to open the brackets and use the trigonometric function. So cos, we know the function, so cos a minus b is basically cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. And sin a minus b is sin a cos b minus cos a sin b, right? This is the same function as the first function. So we expand these trigonometric functions and this is the equation that we get. So this is the final equation that we get after expanding. This is the equation, right? After expanding the trigonometric functions, this is the equation that we get. Now what we have to do is we have to compare the terms of cos omega t and sin omega t on LHS and RHS, right? So on LHS, cos omega t is this term, cos omega t, this term and this term, right? So we take all the factors uh, related to those particular terms and this is the equation that we get which is for core balancing of cos omega t, right? Now next what we are doing, we are balancing sin omega t. So sin omega t, sin omega t and sin omega t, right? So the second equation, the third equation is for balancing of sin omega t. So these are the factors for sin omega t on LHS and RHS. So we balance these two terms, right? Now these equations, second and third, it can be written this way. If we take, because there are two terms for cos phi so we can take cos phi common similarly in equation 3 sin phi we can take common and we'll write the factors in this way now if we square and add these two equations right these two equations this one and this one so this is the result that we get because sin square theta and cos square theta is 1 so here it is phi so cos square theta plus sin sorry cos square phi plus sin square phi will give the value 1 so this is the equation that we get on squaring and adding. Now if we take this factor y on this hand, so what we are interested in, we are interested in the ratio x upon y, right? So this is the value that we get, right? And we already know that under root s upon m gives the natural frequency which is omega n and the damping factor zeta is given by the formula c which is damping coefficient upon 2 m omega n so by using these two formulae we can reduce this equation x upon y in this form and this equation of x upon y gives the value of the so this is the equation for displacement transmissibility and this equation is same as the force transmissibility at resonance when omega is equal to omega n this is the value of epsilon and when there is no damping, this is the value of epsilon. Now, in short, we can say that transmissibility is basically the ratio of transmitted value upon the applied value. Whether we talk about the force transmissibility, motion transmissibility, displacement transmissibility, in all the cases, the values remain the same and the formula is always the transmitted value upon applied value. Now, if we plot a graph between transmissibility and omega upon omega, omega upon omega n, which is the frequency ratio, then what we see that when omega upon omega n is equal to 1, that means the resonance condition. The transmitted force is what? It is infinite. So, what exactly happens in case of infinite? So, there is nothing like infinity. So, in practical uh, cases, what happens? The amplitude increases to a large uh, extent in such a way that it can damage the system. Now here we see that the value of epsilon, that means transmissibility maximum at the position, at this position where omega upon omega n is under root 2. So we get this value from this equation. If we play epsilon is equal to 1, we get the value of omega so if we calculate the value as minus 1 minus omega upon omega n square. So we can find the value of omega upon omega n and we get the value as under root 2. That means the maximum 
transmission takes place when uh, omega upon omega n is under root 2. Now, when we say for the values of uh, frequency ratio, which is denoted by r or omega upon omega n, so for the values which are less than under root 2, the epsilon is large. If we come to this, uh, this region, we see that epsilon is at very large values. So what does it mean? It means that the transmitted displacement is more than the applied displacement or the input displacement, right? And also the damping is also very large when uh, this omega upon omega n is less than root 2. Now when we go on this side of the graph when omega upon omega n is greater than root 2, we see that the transmitted displacement, the transmissibility is less. That means transmitted displacement is always less than the transmitted uh, then the applied uh, displacement or you can say the transmitted force is always less than the uh, applied force and we also see that when omega upon omega n is greater than root 2 the damping also increases uh, in this region we see that damping is also increasing right we see the values damping is increasing rather in this region the damping is effect of damping is not much upon epsilon it's almost the you know same values which is less than one so almost the same value so there is not much effect of damping therefore in the systems where omega upon omega n it varies from zero to higher values we see it is going from zero to higher values so at certain places damper is uh, affecting the system but if we look in this region the effect of damping is quite less Therefore, in such cases, it is always advisable to use stops in place of dampers.